Hello everybody, Troy Rockford here and I want to welcome you all here tonight for this presentation where we're going to talk about the secret black box of the super rich exposed and I have here with me Damon Tyndall. Yes, hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be with you today and I'm certainly very excited with what we're going to cover on today's call. Well time is of an essence today because we have a ton of information to share with you so what do you think, Damon? Should we get this started? Absolutely, Troy. Let's get this information out there. What we're going to do is show you how you can make an absolute fortune during a prolonged and severe economic crisis like we're experiencing today, while everybody else is getting financially slaughtered. Now, I know this sounds like a strange topic to talk about right now, because the US is on the verge of an economic depression but I based on the feedback I've received so far it will be the most valuable hour or so you may ever invest into your family's financial security and prosperity. One thing is for certain you'll not leave here the same person or with the same views about money and wealth creation. If you'd like to make an absolute fortune in a business opportunity or through our investment strategies you're watching the right video because we're going to cover both so if you have money to invest or if you are looking to make money to invest then stay tuned because we have some very exciting information to share with you don't we Damon so let's do a quick summary of the six money-making secrets that could change your life forever Secret number one, secret of what real money is. We're going to reveal to you what the difference is between money and currency and how we got into this economic mess in the first place. Secret number two, secret of protecting your money. I'm going to show you how the ultra rich preserve their wealth during these times and why I think gold and silver will be the greatest wealth transfer in the 21st century. Secret number three, the secret of knowing the economic future. I will be sharing with you how to read the economic future and give you an opportunity to join our academy so you know what we are investing in. Secret number four, secret of automating your money with a home business. This will be paramount during an economic crisis and Damon is the man to show you how. He has developed a number of million dollar systems and he will be revealing his latest system that is tailored for an economic crisis and how you can do the same. Secret number five, secret of a money making mindset. Damon will run through how to prepare your mind for an economic depression and teach you how to think like the rich and become rich. Secret number six, secret of being on the winning team during an economic crisis. We are most excited about this opportunity where we are partnering with an online home business called Jubilee and we have developed our latest system called GLMP 2.0 which has the potential to rapidly accelerate your money making efforts in an online home business. We will show you how you can tap into and financially benefit from this money making system that has been developed by our team of experts. But before we get started, our legal people always advise us to give my audience a disclaimer. So let's get that out of the way first. What I'm going to talk about today is not financial advice, simply because I do not know your personal financial position. What I'm going to give you is my financial decisions and investment strategies that I have put in place to protect and grow my wealth. I encourage you to do further due diligence into these strategies, as they may also help you to protect your wealth. If you do not act on this information and at the very least conduct some further research, the cost of not doing so 
may be that you are confronted with some very tough financial decisions that may adversely impact upon you and your family's lifestyle and spending choices. This is my warning to you. Now I've got that out of the way, please can I have your full attention. Please take this time to get rid of any distractions, turn off your TV, turn down your radio, shut down that Facebook and give this presentation your undivided attention because what I'm about to share with you will help you through these incredible painful financial times. If you feel that I'm exaggerating the extent of this financial crisis, simply turn on your television or pick up your newspaper. This is not an isolated event limited to a few countries. There are ramifications being felt across nearly every country and by most families across the globe. I must warn you, what I'm going to reveal to you will surprise you and may even offend you. I don't mean to do this. All I want to do is share the truth with you. So are you really ready to hear what I have to say? Yes? Great. I know most of you are already familiar with Damon's and my story, but I'm sure there's a few people watching this who we haven't had the pleasure or privilege to talk to yet. So let's hear Damon's story first. Over to you, Damon. Thanks, Troy. Well, I grew up in a small country town and then moved to Newcastle, which is a larger regional city with a population of about half a million people. I did this to attend university. Upon completing my teaching degree and subsequently my first year of teaching, two things became obvious to me, Troy. Firstly, while I enjoyed teaching, I was at the heart of it an entrepreneur. Secondly, that, that I realised that in working for someone else, I was never going to be able to achieve true financial and time freedom. It was a fact that I was trading each hour of my time for one unit of income, earning linear income. There was no way for me to be able to compound my income earning ability other than simply by trading more time to earn more money. The turning point in my life came through reading a book that many of you may have heard of by Robert Kiyosaki titled Rich Dad Poor Dad. This is when I realised that the idea of trading time for money was a fundamentally flawed concept, especially when it meant improving someone else's bottom line rather than my own. Over the last eight years, I've worked towards employing various types of business systems in my life. The underlying principle is that each one of these business systems is based upon the idea that I do the work once, and I do work hard during that period of time, but with the potential to get paid over and over and over again for that effort. This has allowed me to be able to generate multiple streams of passive income. Now, while we'll look in, at more depth uh, into business systems later on in today's presentation, I want to give you a very brief Reader's Digest overview. We'll also take a look at how you can implement money-making business systems into your wealth building or financial plan. However, to give you a brief overview now, basically a business system is a simple step-by-step training, operating or marketing system, all contained in one broad business system. Another way to look at it would be a business in a box type principle. A great example of a very powerful business system on a larger scale is McDonald's. McDonald's as a franchise, I think we'd all agree, don't necessarily make great hamburgers but what they do have is the ability to train teenagers all over the world on how to make their hamburgers and their other products exactly the same. Training teenagers really is an amazing achievement when you think about it. Troy, one of the biggest myths that I've come across in my experience in business is that when you start a new business system and implement that into your wealth building plan, 
that you have to quit your job immediately. As you know, what we have both done is to look for business systems that are already established and allow us to be able to plug into them on a part-time basis with the potential to increase that income and that effort to a more full-time approach. Over time, what we've been able to achieve is to be able to, to develop various multiple streams of residual income and then take that income and then get the compounding wealth creation effect by putting that income into other forms of investment. And we'll look more at that later on, just how powerful that is. What ha that has achieved for us by having these multiple streams of residual or passive income flowing into our lives is it means that we've achieved a very, very powerful insurance policy. But more on that later. But Troy, look, I definitely subscribe to Brian Tracy's philosophy that today the greatest single source, sorry, the greatest single source of wealth is between our ears. Away from business, I love to travel, I love spending time socialising with friends, um, occasionally doing a little bit of party, um, but I'm also a very eager golfer. Although, I must say, while I'm very eager, I'm also a very frustrated golfer. But it's all fun. Uh, Troy, look, back over to you. Let's hear some more about your background. Thanks, Damon. On to me. I'm 30 years old. I have the most amazing Christian family, and I'm blessed with two girls and another baby on the way, and we haven't found out what we're having yet. I was brought up on a farm in New South Wales of Australia, where I was brought up on a family with a family from a very below middle class, but we were a very happy family at that. I guess it was in my blood to be an entrepreneur. My grandfather was an entrepreneur, a farmer entrepreneur, who has done very well. I started my first profitable business when I was only 13, where I built kids' cubby houses and sell them to families around the town. When I was 18, I went off to uni or university to study mechanical engineering, where I paid my own way through university by growing and selling pumpkins during the holidays on my grandparents' farm. As you could imagine, this was not enough to pay my way through university, so I had to start uh, another business with my dad called Watch It Grow where I bagged up mulch and sold it to the local nurseries and later we expanded it to uh, bulk deliveries. Some of uh, my clients included the Government House and Parliament House in Canberra where we expanded to turn over about $220,000 per year. So it was quite a nice to get some of the money back from all the taxes we have paid over the, over the years as well. The problem uh, we had, we suffered from a very severe drought and the mulch actually dried up and we no longer had any product to bag up. Later, I became a project engineer and I soon realised that the corporate world was not for me. So I started, uh, started my own home business where I am the owner of a networking website for home businesses called networkmarketingbusinessschool.com that I have turned that into a nice little income on the side. So what do I like to do for fun? Well, here's a photo of me surfing in the Mantawis in Indonesia in May this year. And just below that, I've got another photo of me kite surfing here in my hometown in Western Australia. So pretty much chuck me in the ocean and I'm as happy as a pig in mud. But my main passion and focus over the last two years has been the economy and investing, and you'll see why over the next 60 minutes or so. Yes, we are Aussies, and we're proud ones at that. And you may be wondering, what on earth would we know about the US economy? And it would be fair of you to be wondering that. The thing is, I wanted to find out what the rich knew about money that I didn't. 
This led me to researching, reading and interviewing people who knew about the history of economics and monetary policy. One of the many things I discovered, knowledge always comes at a price. You think I would have known this after spending four years of my life and $35,000 on a university degree. So I subscribed to some of the top economist newsletters which mounted to over $900 per month which I've learnt more in the last two years than in the four years at university. I worked on building a relationship with these publishers and to cut a long story short, two years later here I am talking to you and letting you know for free the six money making secrets that could explode your wealth and give you some free tips on money making that can protect you during a severe financial crisis. Getting back to what Aussies know about the US economy, well what I found out was the US drives the world's economy. 70% of the world's currency is made up of US dollars which heavily influences every other market around the world including our economy here down under. This graph overlays the Dow Jones index with the ASX which is the Australian stock market and shows the percentage moving around the mean over the past 10 years. See how the markets react virtually the same? When the Dow goes up, the ASX goes up. When the Dow goes down, the ASX goes down. This is one of the reasons we follow the US economy as well as ours because it is virtually the same. So let's reveal the first secret. Secret number one. Secret of what real money is. Everybody wants more money but do we understand what money really is? To understand we need to step back in time and look at what the difference is between money and currency. Once we unlock this secret I promise you you'll never look at money the same way again. The only difference between money and currency is that money has a store of value meaning you can store it and retrieve it at a later date and it will be still useful. Let me repeat that again. Money is when you can store it and retrieve it at a later date and it will be still useful. So what is currency and where did currency come from? Currency is that paper stuff you carry around in your wallet and it all started some 500 years before Christ with the goldsmiths where they were melting gold and silver down to make coins. Coins were used in exchange for goods and services. Similar to today when we go to the local grocer to buy our fruit and vegetables we exchange our paper money or currency to pay for those goods. As time went on people accumulated more and more gold and silver coins. The main problem with gold and silver is that it is very heavy and not convenient to carry around and people did not have a secure place to hold these coins. The goldsmith would hold more gold than a normal person to create the coins and stored his gold in a vault. There are no records of the first storage event but you can imagine it would have played out something like this. Once upon a time there was a goldsmith who had a wealthy farmer friend who sold sheep at the local markets where he had customers who paid in gold or silver coins for his meat. This farmer slowly accumulated enough coins that it was no longer safe to keep it under his pillow at night. So the farmer asked his friend, the goldsmith, if he could keep his gold and silver coins in his vault. Later the farmer told one of his friends that he stores his gold and silver in a safe location with the goldsmith. The farmer's friend, who the goldsmith didn't know, also wanted to store his gold in the goldsmith's vault. The goldsmith agreed, but this time the farmer's friend had to pay rent for the space within the vault. In return, the goldsmith gave the farmer's friend a receipt or an IOU for the gold and silver that was stored in his vault. 
as more and more people found out about this safe location to store their gold and silver, the more and more IOUs were given to or given out to the general public. People ended up trusting these goldsmiths IOUs and started exchanging them for goods and services. So you could pay for the farmer's meat in an IOU rather than gold or silver coins. These goldsmiths IOUs became more and more common and accepted means of payment because the people knew that they could go down to the goldsmith's vault and retrieve their gold and silver coins by handing the goldsmith's IOU to the goldsmith in return for their gold and silver. The IOUs at this stage were 100% gold backed, meaning if all the IOUs were handed back to the goldsmith, he could supply all his customers with their gold and silver. The goldsmith's IOUs was the birth of the first paper currency and the first bank. Over time, the goldsmiths realized that it was rare for majority of the customers to come down to the vault and collect their gold and silver. Greed set in and the goldsmiths found another avenue to make more money. The goldsmith knew how much gold he would require to hold in reserves to serve his customers. So he made a simple calculation on how much gold and silver he would need to have in his vault at any one time to serve his customers. The amount above could be loaned against. So the goldsmith started loaning out more IOUs with a promise to pay plus interest. So the goldsmith would make a much larger percentage with his vault and new merchant banking business. This was the birth of fractional reserve banking. This system works until all the customers line up at the goldsmith's vault and demand to withdraw all their gold and silver deposits at the same time. This is called a run on the bank and would put a bank out of business. In summary, real money is where each IOU or bank loan is equal to the deposited amount of gold and silver. Fractional reserve banking is where you have multiple IOUs with a fraction of the holdings is deposited or held by the bank. Fractional reserve banking became legal in the 19th century in England and remains legal today in America and Australia and in nearly every country around the world. The percentage used to be 10% meaning that the bank would require to hold 10% of the gold for the amount they loaned out, but today there is no reserves. Yes, that paper money you hold in your wallet today is worth nothing, zero zip. Which leads us into the next problem, fiat currency. Fiat currency all started with the collapse of the Brenton Woods system where President Richard Nixon on the 15th of August 1971 announced the temporary suspension of the dollars convertible into gold. This bill that was passed meant that money did not require the partial backing of gold, which allows the Federal Reserve to print money today out of thin air creating a fiat currency supply. Mike Maloney, author of Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver and owner of goldsilver.com explains fiat currency very simply using a flow diagram. Fiat currency is created by a treasury who writes an IOU for say one trillion dollars plus interest which is called a bond and hands it to a Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve Bank then writes the check of say one trillion dollars back to the government. This money then springs into existence through government allocations like buildings, contracts, war and wages for government employees. This money then goes into the hands of the people through their work or businesses which is then deposited back into the public banks. The banks are then allowed to lend out 90% of what was deposited. Say for example, 
$100,000 was deposited, then the bank is allowed to lend out another $90,000. Then the customer uses this money to buy a house or a car, then the seller would deposit that $90,000 into his bank, which that bank can lend out 90% of that $90,000 and on it goes. This means for every $1 created, the banks can create another $10. So even though the Federal Reserve created $1 trillion, the banks will turn this into another $10 trillion. And interest that is paid back on that $1 trillion loan is paid with you for with your hard earned taxes. In essence, the Federal Reserve is buying our debt and profiting from it big time. But it was not always the case that the Federal Reserve had to buy back our own debt. Until recently, the biggest buyer has been China of around $1.2 trillion of bonds and another $3.2 trillion in foreign exchange reserves. China sees that the US dollar's future is coming to an end, and we think the same, and they are taking things into their own hands. Normally to sell these US dollars, the Chinese would sell them on the Forex or the foreign exchange. But with over $3 trillion in their possession, if they were to put this on, all the, on the Forex all at once, it would devalue the US dollar at an alarming rate, rendering their $3 trillion to be worth nothing. So the Chinese being smart are getting rid of their US dollars by buying commodities that are going to hold their value like gold, silver, oil, wheat and barley. So what damage has the fiat currency done to the US? Here is a chart of the national debt in the US which displays the US debt since 1965. You can see it took over 50 years to grow our debt to seven trillion dollars and just in the last 10 years we have doubled our debt to 14 trillion dollars and more recently the debt ceiling has been raised another 2.1 trillion dollars. Today the US has a GDP of 14.6 trillion dollars per year of debt and as I mentioned before our debt level is 14.3 trillion dollars and the spending projections for this year is going to be another 1.8 trillion dollars which will leave the US just shy of 16 trillion dollars which means the US debt is more than the entire country's GDP for the entire year. Traditionally, when the debt to GDP ratio surpasses 90%, this is a fate of no return for a country. Now US joins the countries like Japan at 229% of the GDP, Greece at 152% of the GDP, Jamaica at 137%, Lebanon at 134%, Italy at 120%, Ireland at 114%, Iceland at 103%. This is absolutely insane because to prevent the US economy from collapsing, the Federal Reserve has to print more money out of thin air. Now, when the Federal Reserve does this, this actually devalues every other dollar that is already in existence, reducing your buying power of your existing dollars making your dollars in your bank account worth less. As mentioned, this, is, this process is called inflation. This graph shows you how much currency the Federal Reserve has been printing since 1913 to 2011. Now if you look closely, it took the Federal Reserve from 1913 to 2010 to print just over $800 billion. And just in the last year, the Federal Reserve has doubled that to over $2.1 trillion in total, all to prevent the economy from going into another recession. This is rapidly reducing the value of your money. Here is a chart which shows you the devaluing of the dollar over the past 10 years. In fact, the US dollar has lost 15% 
of its purchasing power in the past 12 months. Now because there is 70% of the world's currency in the US dollars and in effect what happens to the US dollar it has a major influence on every other currency within the world. This has forced just about every other country that exports goods to crank up their printing presses as well. If they don't, then their dollar will become stronger than the US dollar, reducing their exports which leads to less GDP for their country, preventing economic growth which will cause deflationary effect in their domestic economy preventing them to grow which will cause deflation in their economy. Now with all countries printing at the same time it is destined for all countries to suffer from hyperinflation at the same time in the near future. Now hyperinflation is a country's worst nightmare but it is not uncommon either. Hyperinflation reduces the buying power of currency. So your $100 note today but only buy you a loaf of bread in the future. Now this is not uncommon. Hyperinflation has happened in many countries around the world before. Here are some countries where hyperinflation has occurred. France in 1793 with five levies. Germany with one billion mark in 1923. Greece in 1943. Hungary in 1945 the Central Bank of China in 1947, Chile in 1975, Bolivia in 1985, Argentina in 1985 as well, Peru in 1989 with a hundred thousand, Nicaragua with a $10 million note in 1990, Zaire in 1992, Russia in 1992, Brazil in 1993, Bosnia in 1993, Georgia in 1994, Ukraine in 95, Angola in 95 as well, Belarus in 96, Turkey in 97, Romania in 2001, Venezuela in 02 and with Zimbabwe with a record 100 trillion dollar note and if you think this won't happen to the US well it has already happened twice once in the Revolution War and in the Civil War. Falling currency and sales leads to unemployment and reduced salaries which means less money spent creating a downward spiral on the economy. So let's have a look at what the real unemployment figures actually are because those figures that are presented to us in the media are not entirely correct. What the government conveniently forgets to include are the people who have not looked for a job in more than 30 days or on the other hand those who have got part-time jobs because they want to perceive that things are not as bad as it seems but guess what things are getting pretty bad. So if we feel bad with these figures from the government then you'll be shocked with this graph. Real unemployment sits around 23 percent and unemployment during the Great Depression sat around 24 percent. This graph shows you unemployment over the past 70 years and it really demonstrates the severity of our situation. The vertical grade shadowed lines indicates recessions. We are already sitting at the highest levels of unemployment since the Great Depression and we haven't felt the real impact of this depression yet. Well everything is not all doom and gloom which brings us to the second secret. Secret number two, secret of protecting your money. Larry Bates, author of The New Economic Disorder said Wealth is never really destroyed, it is merely transferred and what I'm doing is moving all my assets into the same place where the super rich protect their money in the times of economic unpredictability and great financial uncertainty. 
The great news is that this same wealth protection strategy is available to you too. And doing so can get you on the winning side to make an absolute fortune. But the thing is, this window of opportunity is closing a little bit every day and there will be a time when this window is completely closed. The place that the super rich protect their money is in gold and silver and farming land. The obvious course of action for me was to own hard money, that being gold and silver. Well I have gone all in with thin silver since May 2010 and have been buying it regularly ever since. From my first investment in 2010 where I paid $17.50 an ounce, I'm now up an incredible 147% in 15 short months. Here is a graph of the silver price over the last 36 years. But if you bought silver back in 2001 for around $5 an ounce, today the price of silver is sitting around $42 an ounce. Meaning if you invested in silver 10 years ago, you would have made 100% every single year for the past 10 years. So why have I chosen silver over gold? Well, for three reasons. One, the gold-silver ratio is out of balance. Two, the silver is consumed where gold is partially consumed. One, the gold-silver ratio is out of balance. Two, silver is consumed where gold is partially consumed. And three, the silver price is manipulated to the low side. The gold-silver ratio is simply the price of gold divided by the price of silver. From this next graph, you can see the gold-silver ratio over the last 40 years. As we do this presentation, the gold-silver ratio is at 1 to 44, which means one ounce of gold is equal to 44 ounces of silver. For the first 2,000 years when gold and silver was money, the average ratio sat around 1 to 12, but it did fluctuate up and down around 1 to 12 as well. It's a bit of a coincidence, but it is estimated that there is one ounce of gold to every 12 ounces of silver available within the Earth's crust. And this was probably why there was 12 times more silver available in the free markets for this ratio to materialize. From where we are now, silver needs to increase three times in price just to get back to the history average of 1 to 12 and it has, gone, has not gone below 1 to 20 for the last 40 years. So if gold is going as high as I think it's going to, then silver should go even further. Now, let's talk about the silver supply. The silver supply has also contracted over time compared to gold. The world produces around 700 million ounces of silver per year from mining and around 160 million ounces from scrap recovery. That makes the current total supply to be 900 million ounces per year. The world consumes about 750 to 800 million ounces in fabrication demand, including industrial, jewelry, and coinage per year. This means there is roughly 100 to 150 million ounces left over each year. Up until a few years ago, the world consumed around 100 to 150 million ounces more silver than it produced annually. So we depleted the world silver inventories by that amount each year. The world did that basically for some 60 consecutive years from World War II to around 2006. This took the world's silver inventories down some 90% over that time span, from 10 billion ounces to around 1 billion ounces or less. Now there's actually more gold than silver above the Earth's crust. It doesn't take much of an imagination to see 
where this is heading. Therefore, if gold goes to $5,000 an ounce in the next two, year, two to five years, silver could possibly match the price of gold. This would be over 100 times of where it is today. I'm not saying it will, but free market ratios are saying it is possible. On top of this, silver has been manipulated like no other commodity before. Gold is manipulated as well, but not to the extent that silver is. Theodore Butler has been trying to expose this for 40 years. He has been somewhat successful by partially being responsible for inquiries that have been running for the last three years in hope to resolve these criminal activities. Once this has been resolved, watch out silver, it will explode. Now you know what to buy. When will be the right time to sell? And more importantly, what will we be investing in next? Well, that is why I have joined an academy of experts who know exactly what to invest in and when. This unique academy interviews and records some of the best entrepreneurs and investors around the world. And this information can be made available to you. These people who have been interviewed are very su successful people who have portfolios ranging between $10 million to $100 million. In fact, here's just a few of the amazing secrets you could learn from this academy. How to buy your home like the rich do. The best way to buy your dream car. How to take advantage of today's turbulent market to make an absolute fortune like the rich. How to find a private banker who will give you money at rates you'd never find through your local bank like the rich. How to buy and sell businesses like the rich. How to obtain international passports and citizenships. How the rich teach their kids about money so you can teach yours. How to protect yourself and your assets from lawsuits like the rich do. How to find and invest in stocks that increase by 100 to 300% per year like the rich do. How to buy cash flow apartment complexes like the rich. How to invest in commercial real estate. How to buy foreign real estate in developing nations like India, Brazil and China. How and where the rich put their money for retirement in order to avoid massive taxes and so much more. So if you'd like to learn more then you must click the link below this video and you will be sent immediately to a website so you can register to find out how you can join. This will allow you to hold the knowledge of what to do, how to do it and when to do it. But before you do, you'll want to know the next four secrets which brings us to the third secret. The secret number three, the secret of knowing the economic future. The secret of knowing the economic future lies within two things. Number one, knowing who is in control. Two, knowing your economic history and wealth cycles. Let's start with a quick history lesson. Studying the past is one of the best ways to learn how to predict the future. And the ability to predict the future is key to building incredible wealth. We have to travel back to 200 years before Christ when Rome was having trouble and times and life was tough. Unemployment levels were at all time highs and getting really, really bad. As a result, people were saving what little money they had and were spending less. People had shops at the markets were closing their doors because they were not making any money. So in response, the government borrowed money from the goldsmiths to hire the thousands of workers to boost their economy to start spending again. The administration spent thousands of dollars on public work projects and they continued to increase the size of the military in order to protect themselves. And as the massive cost for these programs continued to increase, 
the government had no choice but to borrow more and more money off the goldsmiths in order to pay for all their bills. But where was the goldsmiths getting all this new money from? Well, they were printing it. The currency expanded at a rapid rate and the goldsmiths continued to profit because money was plentiful. This led to hyperinflation and exactly where the goldsmiths wanted the government and the people to be. The government was beyond paying their debt back to the goldsmiths, so the goldsmiths started to contract the money supply by introducing a new currency. Leaving the government and the people with massive debt that they could not pay. The government and the people had to hand over their assets to the goldsmiths to pay for their loans. This led to the fall of Rome and this contributed to the start of the Dark Ages. Fast forward to today and the same thing is already happening. So who are our new goldsmiths that are in control of our money supply? Well, the Federal Reserve is responsible for our money supply, so they must be the new goldsmiths. But the thing is, there is nothing federal with the Federal Reserve Bank. There is no reserves either. The term federal is a deception to get the public to think it is owned by the government. So if it is not federal, who owns it? The truth is, the Federal Reserve Bank is owned by private bankers whose sole goal is to produce high profits to limited shareholders. It all started when some very wealthy men made a trip to Jackal Island in 1911 where they concocted a plan to make the Federal Reserve Bank private. From a stroke of the pen the bill was passed in Congress and today they have grown their empire to own a reserve bank in just about every country around the world. The only countries that they have not got a reserve bank in is Iran, Libya, Cuba, Sudan and North Korea. These people call themselves the elite and they are the super, super rich of the world and are the new age goldsmiths. And I don't mean this lightly. These people could write a check for the rest of their lives for ten million dollars per day and not go broke. These people have the ability to hike up interest rates, manipulate oil price, manipulate gold price and they even have a major influence on war. These people are the most powerful people on the planet. Who are these people? Well, they are the bankers and oil producers of the world. The Rothschilds, the Warburgs, the Rockefellers, the Queen of England, the Soros, the Gates, the JP Morgans, the Chasers, the Chiefs, the Aldridges, the Turners, the Kissingers, and even Oprah. The secret of knowing the economic future is knowing the elite's plan. Now, I can't stress this enough. The name of the game for these people is control. It's not money. And the only way for them to gain control is to keep us relatively poor by controlling the money supply and the distribution of wealth. Ever wondered why the rich get richer and why in many Western economies the wealth gap widened substantially in recent times? I believe that while protecting their wealth may be part of the plan, more so their level of wealth is so substantial that is more and of an issue of ensuring they remain in control. Remember that with wealth comes lifestyle, but more so there comes great power. This plan is all part of the New World Order. You probably remember Richard Nixon announcing this to the world on the 25th of February 1972. Let's see what he had to say. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets 
except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. The New World Order is the total control of the world's monetary system and total control of your life. Now it helps when you know someone that knows one of these elite and is able to feed this information to the American public. With this information you can validate with what happens in the past to see if this information is reliable. One of the people you need to pay close attention to is Pastor Lindsay Williams. I don't always agree with his philosophies and his predictions but the scary thing is everything he has said over the last three years has come true. So he must have a very reliable source. What these people do is create a crisis and correspondingly they have a solution for the crises. There are two crises that are unfolding before our eyes and they are all part of the New World Order's plan. The currency crisis and the, world, and the oil wars in the Middle East. The New World Order is made up of three areas of control. One, energy. Two, money. And three, people. The elite love oil because oil is power and power is control. Everything that we do, everything we eat, everything we play, all the toys we have, the motorbikes, the jet skis, the sports cars, the clothes we wear, the food we eat and the water we drink is all because of oil. Even your house, your cell phone, your computer was all because of oil and the inexpensive energy that was used to build, produce or manufacture these things. Pretty much everything that has been man-made over the past 200 years is all because of oil. And if you have any doubts about this, have a look at this graph right here. This is the estimated population growth of the world over the last 1,000 years. See how the population has exploded from the 1800s? Well, what was so significant about this period of time? Well, it was oil. And the first commercial oil production started in northwestern Pennsylvania in 1859. With oil came incredible growth in population, wealth and human comforts. Fast forward to today and oil is still the world's energy supply and is still on the elite's agenda of control. It is not readily known but the US has the most oil supply in the world. But they didn't want you to know about it. Believe it or not, but the US has enough oil from only four oil fields to supply the US for about 700 to 800 years. And they discovered these oil deposits 40 years ago. The elite decided not to bring this oil to the American public because the world's oil supply was plentiful and the oil price is still relatively cheap. So where are these oil deposits? I'm glad you asked. Gull Island, the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, Alaskan Crystal Bay, and the Bakken Shale, North Dakota and South Montana area. Here is a photo of the Liberty Rig in Prudhoe Bay in Alaska that is getting ready to drill and bring this oil to the market. Now, for the elite to bring the oil price to where they want it to be, they need to reduce the world's oil supply. This will allow demand to increase and the price of oil to rise. The main oil suppliers today are Saudi Arabia, Iran, Venezuela, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates and the United States. The elite's plan is to bring the price of oil to $150 to $200 a barrel. To do this, they need to do something to restrict the supply of oil. 30% of the world's oil is shipped through the Suez Canal that separates Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Now let's have a look at what is going on around these countries. Some countries in the Middle East are on the verge of civil war and this will be the crisis that will restrict oil shipments around the world. 
and they are using historical religious conflicts between these countries to fuel the fire. If we have a look at what's happening in Yemen and Libya, you can see the crisis the elite are creating. Yemen and Libya are on the entrance to the Suez Canal. We've got, here's a headline article of US is intensifying a secret campaign of Ye Yemen airstrikes. And here's another one. Dozens of civilians killed in NATO air raid on Libyan village. Reducing the supply and increasing the demand for oil will be the catalyst to bring oil to $200 a barrel. So what does all this mean to you? Well, everything we do relies on oil. So everything we do is going to cost a lot more money. The next 12 months will see the price of gasoline at the gas pump skyrocket to eight to $10 per gallon and may go as high as $40 per gallon if we factor in inflation. You'll see the costs associated with your electricity bill, your food, your airline tickets, and the general cost of living increase substantially in the next two years. The money elite also are in control of our economy. Even the recent GFC was fabricated by them and are largely responsible for the 30 million people around the world who lost their jobs. The money elite have people in the highest positions in the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, and the US government who lobbied to prevent the introductory of tighter regulatory practices for investment banks around derivatives and other hybrid investments using mortgage holders and investors' money. High risk lending practices, including offering subprime mortgage loans with high rates of interest, were offered to home buyers that would previously not be qualified nor had the ability to make the mortgage repayments. Rather than the investment banks offering investments with minimal risk and high returns, they offered high risk, unsecured and hybrid investments. Warren Buffett has referred to such derivatives, derivatives as a weapons of mass destruction. With easy access to housing finance through mortgage loans, there was a rapid increase in home buyers and property prices exploded. However, this bubble was unsustainable as it was largely driven by paper money. As the bubble burst during 2007 and 2008, homeowners who bought and borrowed at the height of the growth in the housing market boom were left with three problems. One, struggling to make mortgage repayments. Two, possible loss of their job or required to work longer hours to continue to meet the interest repayments. Or three, faced with foreclosure, with a home worth a fraction of its original value. The global Ponzi scheme that led to the meltdown of the global financial markets and an unprecedented level of mortgage repayment defaults, the SEC and the investment banks were playing a highly dangerous game of Russian roulette with investors and mortgage holders' money. Six million foreclosures by the end of the first quarter 2010 and estimated another nine million to follow from the fallout of the GFC and subprime crisis. The inequality of wealth in the US is far greater than other, any other developed country. Americans have been forced to do two things in response to this inequality. One, work longer hours and two, go into debt. While regulatory reforms of the US financial markets has been very minor and insignificant, we are just around the corner from it all happening again. But this time, it's going to be worse. The money elite have spent billions of dollars on fighting reform to the US financial services industry to keep these hybrid, high-risk investments largely unregulated. There is still little protection in place for investors and mortgage holders today. The money elite who caused this financial wreck are still the ones allowed behind the wheel. There has been very few, if any, criminal conviction as a result of the GFC. 
Now add the currency crisis on top of this as well, prices will accelerate even faster and will compound the negative effects on families and income earners working in traditional forms of employment. As prices and correspondingly as inflation increases, interest rates will be forced higher to combat inflationary effects and this will combine to cause a further deterioration in the housing and building and construction markets. While layoffs increase as job security becomes an even greater concern while the general standard, standard of living falls. We can also expect to see business and consumer confidence continue to plummet further and then you add into the lethal economic cocktail the baby boomers retiring who are owed $113 trillion over the next 20 years from their 401ks. The cumulative effect is that we are on the cusp of the double dip global recession and many experts are now suggesting that we could enter into the second great global depression that will rival the depression of the 1920 and the 1930s. Unfortunately, all economic indicators are pointing that this may in indeed become a reality. And from history, what we have learnt during these times of crisis, we know that historically that such economic and financial crisis contribute to social upheaval and protest as individuals and families become increasingly marginalised. This results in increasing crime, political upheaval and possibly could lead to civil war. Recent violence in London may only be the start of this violence within our society as unemployment increases and the relatively poverty grows. So what does it mean to you and your job? Well, 50% of Americans are employed by the US government, so there is 50% chance that you could possibly be affected. This is everyone in the military, social services, the postal system, the law enforcement and the fire departments, just to name a few. Just recently, for example, the US Postal Service had an incredible 30,000 layoffs. And when the money elite decide it is time to default on the dollar, because they will, then who do you think is going to pay your wages when the government has no money to pay you? Remember, it was only in recent times that were, there was significant concern that the US may default on welfare payments and to their many millions of government service employees. Similar here in Australia, Inflation will increase significantly long term and in turn so will interest rates. In short term you may see the Reserve Bank of Australia reduce interest rates to near zero similar to America but by early 2013 you'll see them start to skyrocket. In Australia people have been forced to take out loans that they cannot pay and when interest rates rise many will default on their home on their loans. The banks will not be able to pay interest on their loans to the reserve banks similar to the US and the elite will get our properties as well for, the ne for next to nothing. We are not talking hypotheticals here. This is reality and already many millions of properties have been seized in the US as a result of mortgage payment defaults. Not to mention the many more millions experiencing severe mortgage stress. Beyond that, what will happen to the stocks, bonds and mutual funds and your 401k plan? We have seen incredible volatility and losses on the stock and equity markets across the world. Well, these markets are going to, to continue to tumble, leading up to the default of the US dollar. The stock market will crash to new record low levels while commodities like gold and silver will skyrocket to unprecedented record highs. Once the US has defaulted they will roll out a new world currency. When it comes to knowing what is happening in the stock market you would generally look to the most powerful CEOs, COOs 
and the presidents for advice on how their company is performing. If you go to secform4.com, you can check out to see what these guys are buying or selling stocks in their own companies. If they are buying, you think it would be a good investment. If they are selling, then it would be probably be a bad investment. Let's take a look at what these people are doing in Google. You can see the number of shares bought by these people over the last 12 months is equal to zero. Absolutely nothing. And the number of sales has been over $301 million worth of shares. Now you think that is remarkable. Look at Bank of America. The difference of buy to sales is a ridiculous $1.1 billion. Now have a look at Microsoft just under seven billion dollars worth of stocks sold with none being bought at all and Apple 368 million dollars worth of stocks sold do you see a common trend here they are, are all selling their stocks why because they are aware what is around the corner in fact the buy to sell ratio is over 1 to 140,000 as we speak. That means one person is buying to 140,000 people selling. Now many of these CEOs, presidents and directors may not be member of the money elite but they sure do understand what these people are doing and they are protecting themselves by moving their wealth into the safe haven of gold and silver. So how do I think this is all going to unfold and when? No one knows the exact time frame and how far the markets will crash and how high the gold and silver will go, but here is my rough predictions. Civil war in the Middle East will be ongoing. The Greece debt default will happen in February 2012. Italy and France debt default roughly April 2012. Spain debt default June 2012. Oil production will be restricted in the Middle East in November 2012. World hyperinflation in September 2012. US oil production increased December 2012. UE, the EU debt default in January 2013. The US debt default in February 2013. There will be U.S. upheaval from February to July 2013 and the new currency around July 2013. The Dow Jones in 2013 will be reached to 1350. The ASX 550 in 2013. Gold could possibly reach to $18,500 U.S silver to $925 US an ounce, oil $225 a barrel and by 2014 you'll see US interest rates possibly get to 24%. What I have predicted here is very bold for this fast and changing environment because there are so many factors to consider and you need to monitor these things closely on a daily basis so you know when the best time is to sell your gold and silver and more importantly what to buy next. This is why I am a member of an academy of people who really know what is going on and monitors our, monitors our economy on a daily basis. This allows us to be informed when the timing is right. I highly recommend you become a member of our academy. You can do this by clicking the link below this video. But before you do, let's hear from Damon. When it comes to money mindset, building automated online systems and sales, there is no better person to bring it all together than Damon. So sit tight, refill your coffee and be prepared for some of the most powerful money making strategies that you have ever seen. Over to you, Damon.